They, I have the most loyal people. Did you ever see that? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. It's been eight years since then-candidate Trump made that astonishing claim in the days leading up to the 2016 Iowa caucuses. And as all eyes turn to Iowa once again, Trump lawyer D. John Sauer is making an eerily similar argument in the D.C. Court of Appeals as the twice-impeached, quadruple-indicted, disgraced one-term ex-president argues for absolute presidential immunity from prosecution. Could a president who ordered SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival who was not impeached, would he be subject to criminal prosecution? If he were impeached and convicted first. If he were impeached and convicted first. A jaw-dropping look into the Republican frontrunner's worldview and legal defense. The timing of the three-judge panel's decision remains unclear, and how quickly the immunity decision comes down may be just as important as the eventual ruling due to Trump's litany of court battles. Joining me now, Nick Ackerman, former Watergate prosecutor and former assistant United States attorney for the Southern District of New York. Nick, it's always so good to see you. Look, I'm focusing on this D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals argument that happened this past week. You and I have practiced law for a long time. I have never heard arguments advanced by a lawyer on behalf of any litigant, like I heard from John Sauer this week, Nixon versus Fitzgerald is a case that was cited repeatedly by Donald Trump and that came up during those argue, oral arguments repeatedly. One of the remedies that deals with absolute immunity, according to Nixon versus Fitzgerald, is the idea that there are deterrent effects on a presidential, you know, a president's bad conduct through constant scrutiny by the press and vigilant oversight by Congress. I mean, Nick, when you're not getting that from the press, um, courtesy of the Fox News of the world, et cetera, and you're not getting that vigilant oversight by Congress, how is it possible that a president could ever achieve absolute immunity? Well, there is no way a president can achieve absolute immunity in the criminal sphere. The case you just mentioned, um, the Fitzgerald case, is a civil case. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. A president shouldn't be tied up with civil litigation for basically carrying out what are, in effect, um, normal acts of a president that are contemplated in the executive branch. This is completely different. This crazy theory could have only have been created at the Trump University Law School. I mean, there is no way this could have ever come up in any circumstance. The same issue I dealt with 50 years ago, in the Watergate case with Richard Nixon, uh, we never thought for a second that he had to first be impeached uh, in order for us to prosecute him. The only reason we didn't prosecute him prior to the impeachment proceedings was that Leon Jaworski made a decision that we should let Congress do its thing, not interfere, and then, after the impeachment proceeding, we would pick it up. Now, the only reason that Richard Nixon was not indicted was because he was pardoned by Gerald Ford. Uh, nobody ever thought that Nixon would be scot-free and not be able to be prosecuted for criminal acts. Uh, and if, he, if anyone even thought that, why would President Ford have ever pardoned him in the first place if this crazy theory was even in effect? Well, and Nick, to that point, that came up. During the oral arguments, one of the three appellate judges asked John Sauer, what was the purpose of having a pardon, a criminal pardon for Richard Nixon if presidents are not allowed or are not subject to prosecution, criminal prosecution? To be clear for our viewers, there is no law, there is no precedent that says that a president must be impeached and convicted by the Senate prior to facing criminal prosecution, correct? There's nothing that says that. Absolutely not. This is something that they made up out of whole cloth. It really has no basis in the Constitution. It has no basis in any kind of law uh, that is in effect in this country. It just isn't there. Uh, they made it up. Uh, and there is no way that this is ever going to be affirmed by the circuit court. 
And as you mentioned before, this also is going to have a big impact in terms of getting this case back on track so that the trial occurs in March as scheduled. The big issue here is not presidential immunity on a criminal case. The big issue is getting this trial back on track. Trump's only point in bringing this crazy argument is simply to delay this matter and try and weasel his way out of this case by putting it off until he thinks he's going to get elected as president so he can pardon himself. The fact of the matter is what they did this week basically has made it that there is no way the Supreme Court is ever going to want to deal with this ridiculous argument. They're not going to take an appeal from this. The circuit court knows, and they made it very clear in the beginning of that oral argument, that what was really at stake was getting this case back on track. And I think we're going to see that happen this week, and I think we're going to see this trial move ahead in March. Nick, so you read my mind. I was going to ask you if you thought the Supreme Court would take cert and actually take up this case once the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals denies, you know, Trump's appeal. But there is also the presidential immunity defense that's being raised in other jurisdictions. Do you think then that that might actually militate towards the Supreme Court deciding to take it up to maybe make one uniform decision across the board? Oh, I don't think there's any need to do it in this case. I mean, it's pretty clear what the law is. There's no idea that there is a president can go on Fifth Avenue and kill somebody and they're not going to get prosecuted. That's insane. The idea that a president can go out and kill his political and point uh, um, opposition and not get prosecuted is completely off the charts. There's no way anybody's going to buy that. They could make this argument until the cows come home, and it's not going to get them anywhere. What's really at stake here is getting this trial that's scheduled for March 4th back on track, because the minute that Donald Trump is in the dock, the jury is sworn in, he is gone. He is going to be convicted and be on his way to the big house. That's what he's concerned about. His only legal defense here, it's not on the facts, it's not on the law, it's on delay.